And we're back. With some more oxygen not included. Today we're going to be starting on our uh, reactors. But I just thought I'd come back here and cover how we're going to expand our bee population on this planet without going a little too crazy. Uh, what I've done here is I've just set up a whole bunch of, well, hive locations for, that they can move into. And I've stuck down one beta hive in the middle of them. Beta hive? Beta hive, whatever. I stuck down one in the middle using a critter drop-off. So we stuck down one bee tiny there, left the doors closed and waited until it formed a hive. Then we opened all the doors. Now this thing's going to spawn bee tinies and the theory here is they'll walk around through here and at some point they'll turn into a bee. And if they're in one of these alcoves or bee alcoves, they should turn straight into a hive because they can't detect any beta hives with it, beta hives within range. Theoretically, I don't know how well that'll work. So the plan would be they would sort of spread out and then as they grow, they'll grow even faster and eventually they'll just fill this entire area with hives, which should give us a mass of bees to work with. What it'll do to my computer, I have no idea, but it's just a, a we'll come back here in a bit and see how it's doing. I think we can call this experiment a success. That is, um, that is a lot of hives. Yeah, moving my screen around while the game is running is, is a little bit slow. We've set up a bunch of these to be auto harvested as well. And all the enriched uranium is taken from here and it's shipped back to the home world uh, through this. Well, we basically got this set up so it allows manual use. And oh, all worn lead suits can go back to there as well. And all enriched uranium. So all the enriched uranium gets chucked back into this and any worn atmo suits or lead, lead suits get thrown back through there as well. And then on the home world, yeah, we dump all the lead suits back through, where is it? Uh, yes, this thing over here. So we dump in the lead seeds through here so that they can get them back and the uranium we all stockpile over here. We should have about four tons of the stuff or 5.2 tons. Okay, we're up to 5.2 tons of enriched uranium. I think, I think we can build our reactors now. I think a double reactor, but we're going to need a lot of space. Let me scope out a good location. We'd also like to put it somewhere closer to the top of the map, maybe. I'm thinking this area here, we can fit one in somewhere around this location. We don't want to go too far to the right though, we're going to run into those light fixtures which we can't get rid of. Those can't be deconstructed just yet. There is a mod we could get, but we'll avoid that for now. Also, we can't put it over here because there's a vent and squeezing any more further over to the right is going to put us to the edge of the map. I think, yeah, here's nice and central and it'd be nice to have a, a big nuclear reactor chucked down in here. It would seem totally perfectly safe. Now, give me a minute, we're going to have to uh, excavate out a rather large hole in this biomes when we do get this up and running we're going to need an awful lot of water to start it off these things well nuclear reactors require a lot of clean water and a lot of steam so we are going to tap into this vent over here this saltwater geyser we should have tapped into it ages ago but it's been kind of been rushing this thing comes in at 95C, so it'll give us a lot of hot water to start. I want to use this as opposed to the cold water one we have, or the cold slush geyser we have over here. However, we will place the liquid tank over here. We're going to seal it in to keep the heat from escaping, and this will be where we put our hot salt water. Of course, it will require us to pump it all the way over there. I would prefer to have put a tank over here, but we don't really have a decent mm, localized tank for it. And maybe over here, actually. Hmm, let me think for a second. This here should make a perfectly acceptable storage tank. We'll jam this full of a few liquid containers just to make sure we've got some in stockpile and we can use that hot water to fill up our new reactor once it's online, which will be over here somewhere. We've got plenty of space for a nice nuclear reactor in there and then all the plants that will go with it. We want to mutate a bunch of plants. This should only take a couple of minutes. All we got to do is core out this entire area and oh, there's no one's in Atmos suits. Ah, we got enough close by oxygen. This place has been cooling all our oxygen supply since the start of, well, since we got that oxygen production facility up. Seems to be doing a pretty good job. What's the temperature like? Yeah. There's the hot oxygen coming in. It rotates through. It comes out as cold oxygen at 9 degrees. This stuff comes out at, what, 7 to 10? Yeah, perfectly fine. Be grand, though we are starting to run out of water here. We're going to have to start putting in some chill water, I think. Well, I prefer to get the power up and running first, but if things get desperate, we can grab this brine tank over here and start filtering it. It's it's cold water, but we've heated it up a bit with some uh, refinement. This though, should you take a couple of cycles. And done. Uh, so we've got this up and running now. This will be our storage tank for, well, salt water. There's a bunch of clean water in there, but who cares? We can, we can filter that out if needs be. Oh, I forgot to put in a pump. You know what? We'll do that in a minute. What's more important is the update has dropped. And because the update has dropped, it's changed how food storage works again. Uh, basically, storing food in a vacuum is not enough. It, mm, it 
takes a look at the temperature of the food, not the temperature of the environment. It used to be you could see it in a vacuum and it tricked the game because then the food thought it was in a, a freezing cold environment. It wasn't realistically, but you know, the game didn't care. Now it actually looks at the temperature of the piece of food itself to determine whether or not it's deep frozen. So we're back to using fridges for now. We'll get around to doing a deep freeze section, but I want to build a reactor first. Also, a couple of the graphics have been improved. This is the new material study terminal or radiation research. It's still, you know, you still have to sh shoot radiation bolts in there, but this is what it looks like. I can't wait to get some research on that going. But, yep, we, we don't have time for that either. Um, yeah, we want to get the nuclear reactor up and running. In fact, can we still build a nuclear reactor? Yeah, yeah, we, we still got access to the reactor. It's fine. Now, we just got to decide exactly where we're going to place it in here. Oh, before we build this, there's another new thing that's come along, and it's a long-awaited improvement. Demolition. If you go up to the level 3 construction, you get demolition, which allows you to demolish gravitas buildings. Yes, yes, thank you so much. I will take that. Uh, both of our build diggers can grab that. That's going to... It's going to put about 21 morale out of 26 or so, but they, they should be fine. Now, let's see what that does too. Can, can we get rid of computer desks? Oh, yes. Yes, we can. We can actually demolish computer desks now. Can we do, demolish light fixtures? Oh, finally. Lockers? Yes, you can also demolish lockers, but they're they're made of neutronium. What happens if you demolish something made of neutronium? I suppose we're about to find out. All right, so desks are... Okay, nothing. You get nothing back when you demolish them. Oh, okay, that's how they're going to balance this. Can we get rid of that clock? We, we can totally get rid of clocks. This just... This is a nice quality of life improvement because I know these things are so annoying. In fact, yeah, that's how annoying they are. You, you need to go so that we can finish that ladder system. But then, 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 okay, then we're definitely onto the reactor. Nuclear reactors are, well, they're actually pretty straightforward in this version of the game. You dump in water into them and they release an awful lot of steam, an awful lot of hot steam. And you need a lot to take care of that much. One reactor is going to redline nine steam turbines. Well, okay. Uh, let me try and explain that maybe a little bit better. If you want to run all the steam turbines necessary to cool down all the steam coming out of a reactor, you're also going to need to cool down the steam turbines themselves because 10% of all the heat destroyed by the steam turbine is actually released at the top. So you actually get a, well, you have to cool down the steam turbines and destroy the heat from the research reactor, which means we're going to need an aqua tuner to cool down the nine team steam turbines per reactor which means you're actually going to redline these just a little bit. You'll, you'll, the steam should go set light about 203 degrees Celsius, so there will be a little bit of wastage, but if we put in a tenth steam turbine, it's just, well, it's not quite as symmetrical and doesn't look as pretty, okay? So we're going to waste just a tiny little bit of heat, just a tiny little bit, bit of heat, and it should look like a nice design, a nice replicatable design, actually. Yeah, let's uh, skip this forward a bit while we finish this off. There's a little bit of stuff I'm doing in the oil biome in the background where we're just basically scooping up some pools of crude oil to turn into plastic so we can make more steam turbines. It takes 200 uh, plastic to make each one of these, and uh, yeah, we need a little bit more plastic because we need, well, six more steam turbines to go in here. To cool down all of these steam turbines, we've got an aqua tuner, one over here and one over here. Actually, we're going to want to put some temperature shift plates behind them. We've definitely got some diamond down in the oil biome somewhere. So we'll put one there, one there, just to help them radiate the heat out. What they're going to do is just run a liquid through here. That liquid will cool down all the steam turbines, come back down here and get re-chilled. Re and then all the heat will get dumped in here, which will get destroyed by the steam turbines. Well, 90% at a time. Now, automation-wise, we're going to want to put a, a little bit of a sensor or two in places, but we'll worry about that in a minute once all of these masses of construction orders start getting completed. While we are waiting on all of this to complete, I thought we'd have a quick look at something interesting. It's uh, this area over here where we've been running way too many beehives. Just, just so many. If you go to the radiation overview, would you look at that? It's just beautiful. Those pulses of radiation are when the, the hives are actually processing the uranium ore into deplete, into enriched uranium. It's it's beautiful. We're not even harvesting these at the moment. There seems to be, well, the bees seem to still be a little bit buggy. I don't know if their most recent patch has fixed it, but occasionally people will go in here in suits and still get stung. Even though I don't think they're supposed to in suits, though I, I could be wrong. And then I'd have to drag send someone in to drag them out. They usually get a bit stung as well, and then they spend a bunch of time recovering in the triage cots. So I'm not sure... If the bees are meant to do that or not, I'll have to go read the patch notes, but not until we finish this reactor. I, I really want to get this reactor up and running because this will be our power supply for, well, the rest of the game on this base, I think. This is going to be an awful lot of power to work with. I think we're just about ready to seal this sucker up and get it ready. Well, just 
several more steps that will have to be done. We're also going to need a nuclear waste tank to dispose of all the nuclear waste we're about to generate. And oh, and we're going to chop off the top here so we can help vent the gases out. We want to get all of the gases out of here because this is going to be only steam. So there's going to be a vacuuming section we will have to do. Uh, okay, and what else was there? Oh, yet, yet, nuclear waste tank, that was it. Uh, I think, hmm, I think we'll put the nuclear waste tank up near space somewhere, just because once it gets too full, we'll just let the rest of it sort of vent into the vacuum of space because we don't really want it or need it. We're just going to take the top off the reactor here so uh, any of that gases in there can start to escape. It's going to take a while to vacuum this all out. This will be our one access point in here for any maintenance that's required inside this area. It's just easier. <laughs> um... I've done this before. I sort of um, stealing a bunch of ideas from the old uh, rocket chimney design. This is sort of what it works. Your your nuclear reactors are basically rocket engines. They just spit out so much heat and steam that you just strap enough steam turbines on it takes care of the problem. Now over here, we're just uh, insulating in our enter. These steam turbines are going to run a little bit hotter than normal because of the coolant we're going to be using, but we'll get around to that later. For now, actually, you know what? We have a nice wide open space here. Here we might as well stick in our ah nuclear waste dump. Nuclear waste dump might as well go here. The only thing it'll affect are those shovels, and I'm pretty sure they can't die to just about anything. This is not going to be complicated at all. We're just going to make a little bit of a tank. We're going to actually dump in all the toxic waste we've got lying around at the moment, or the radioactive waste we've got lying around at the moment, the solid stuff that we have from the bees. And then any new toxic waste we get in from the reactor will just get dumped in there on top of it. There's actually some good uses for this toxic waste, so it's, it's always nice to keep some of it around, though you produce so much, I'm thinking any that makes it up to this point and disappears into the vacuum of space will, will not be missed. This could not be simpler. We're going to have some toxic waste or radioactive waste that ends up at the bottom of the reactor here. We're going to pump it all the way up here and over into this section where it gets dumped into the tank. Easy peasy. Uh, we'll go... Yeah, now that I look at that, that looks... Nice, but maybe a little bit confusing if you don't know what's going on. But don't worry, don't worry. Once we activate the reactors, I think it will all make an awful lot more sense. So I think first thing we've got to do is get all these gases out of here. We can't have any of them interfering with the steam pressure. This should get it rolling. We've got a gas pump ripping them out down, ripping out the gases down here, and one more up here. We could put in a bit more, but I think we're fine for now. There's a couple of side projects we need to take care of while this place is emptying out. What are we down to? About 28 grams, or sorry, 7 grams. Mm, worst case scenario, say 20 over there. Yeah, so we're down to about 20 grams at the worst cases. It'll be fine. Over here, we've got a sort of a little vacuum section. So what should happen here is this crude oil will stop any heat from your here escaping. It will it might get a little bit warm, but since there's a vacuum gap here and insulated tile, none of it should get into the salt water, which means this should be a sealed-in area where all the heat from this will just be trapped in here. Unless, you know, of course, it gets so hot that the crude oil flashes to petroleum and then sour gas, in which case, well, we've got bigger problems to worry about at that point. Oh, and another thing, the game keeps freezing about once a cycle, and it's not to do with autosaves. I switched the autosaves to once every 10 cycles. I think it's to do with the bees. I think the bees update once every cycle, and when they do, yeah, it causes some definite slowdown. It's, um... Ah, whatever. We we've got our uranium out of it. How much enriched uranium are we up to? Eight tons. Yes, eight tons of enriched uranium. I really wish we could make nuclear weapons. Oh, that'd be so much fun if we could make nuclear weapons in this. The amount we could make... You know, use it for mining. You get, like, your, your uranium bomb, you just throw it into a section, and it mines out everything in an area for you. Maybe destroys neutronium? That would be nice. Yeah. Uh, let me get some... We're going to have to get some water pumped up here and ready to get dumped into these reactors. I'm not installing the reactors just yet, of course, but we're going to need a, a clear flow of water, so we're going to need to start desalinating a bunch of that salt water we've been collecting. All this stuff down here has been collecting quite nicely. This vent became active, and we've got... Yep, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. We've got about 30 tons of water down here. More than enough for what we're going to need. But we do need to run a pipe up to where we're going to need it, and we're going to need to desalinate it as well. And this stuff's going to be hot. So let me do a little bit of planning here on where we're going to plug that in. This is going to be a rather long pipe run. Uh, the pipe's going to start out over here, come all the way up through this section, then uh, go by our oxygen production, then go all the way along the top of our base. Insulated pipes, of course, because it's about 95 degree water. Then it's going to go over here and go into two desalinators. Each one can handle about half a pipe, so it's just going to overflow from one to the second. And then half of the water is going to go up here, and we're going to store it in a liquid tank over this section. And let me grab something that can withstand the temperatures. We're going to go with gold, I presume. Yeah, gold, because it can handle 125, so we'll put the gold right there. And then the other one is going to send its water all the way along over to this section, where it's also going to get put into a backup storage tank uh, once those tiles get deleted. 
Yeah, we're going to want a lot of water in reserve because if we ever stop feeding water to these reactors for even a moment, they'll explode. Kind of inconvenient, but, you know, kind of half the fun of the reactors. All right, let's, uh, let's see if we can't get this done in a timely fashion. So I made the foolish mistake of maybe going to grab a shower while the, uh, the water was filling, and there was a couple of mistakes made. One, the water flowed in here, then backfilled along this pipe because I hadn't got a bridge in here, and then started dumping into the tank. So when I came back, the bottom of this was sort of flooded with water. And that started pumping the water over here and dumping it into our radiation, uh, or toxic waste tank. Yeah, so now I'm, I have to filter out this water and, and clean it up a bit, but it's fine. Because we put all that warm water in there, we were able to actually keep dumping in the solid nuclear waste. And the solid nuclear waste, the moment it shows up, it starts to heat up. And once it gets above its liquefaction liquefi point, liquefaction point, yeah, it turns into liquid. And we actually end up with liquid nuclear waste, which I kind of prefer. Namely because we're going to use that later as a coolant. But we're just about ready to start this up, I think. We might just be. Everything's in place, the plumbing is in place, the piping is in place. Oh, yes, we do have to put in some coolant into these uh, cooling loops. We're probably going to start with water, but we'll upgrade that later. Uh, one minute, yeah, just let me uh, let me finish off filtering this water and then, uh, then we'll get around to starting the reactor. Another thing we're going to de need to deal with is, of course, the radiation that comes out of this. So I think we'll put in some suit ducts, since this is the only real way in. Hmm, we're probably going to have to wall this whole area in here because we're going to want to get in across here and across the top to get in at the plants. We want to plant plants around the reactor so we can take advantage of all that radiation to mutate things. Uh, I'm thinking, yeah, suit dock around here should be fine. We're going to have to get them to take off the regular suits and put on some radiation ones. This plan is, well, I've used this workaround before. They're going to come in here, drop off their suits at this dock, then pass through here to pick up their lead suits, and then they can come up here. We'll... One second... What we'll be doing is walling this in like that. One second, this is not quite finished yet, but this will be when the reactor is active. At that point, they'll be able to come in here, manage the reactor while in the lead suits, and they'll also be able to come in and cross here. We're going to be putting in our planting areas around here, around the reactors as best as we possibly can to take advantage of the radiation. That's the theory. We'll see how it works out in actual practice. Uh, over here, we're just, we've expanded across the top of this so we can gas this area and pressurize it. And well, we're going to be putting plants in here so they're going to need gas pressure, though we might want to get rid of that hydrogen. Hmm. And over here, we're slowly filtering out all this water we accidentally put in there. We accidentally put in several, 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 several tons of clean water. Oops. But it's fine. It's fine. We've also got a, a bunch of nuclear waste in there, and we'll filter that nuclear waste back in once all the water is out. All right. So close to being so close to activating this sucker. I am... I just really want to activate the reactors. I hope they haven't made any changes to them. Is it with the new patches? Because mine sort of depends on them dropping the water out as, or the steam out as water. But you know what? We'll cover that once we turn them on and hopefully they don't explode. One thing we're trying to do here as well is we're trying to fill up this loop. This is going to be our cooling loop and we're trying to stick nuclear waste in it. Now, I know that doesn't seem like the sanest plan, but nuclear waste is actually really special. Uh, nuclear waste, it freezes at 26.9, which is quite a low freezing point but it vaporizes at 526. And its thermal, con or is it, its specific heat capacity is 7.44. Uh, let's compare that to water, which is 4.17. This just means that it can hold an enormous amount of heat or chill. And when it comes to aqua tuners, all that really matters is how good the specific heat capacity is. This reduces the temperature of whatever liquid goes to it by 14 C. 14 C, no matter what type of liquid it is, no matter what type of specific heat capacity it has. So if we put through this, we get far more cooling if we put through water. Now, I'll go through uh, some of the details of why precisely I'm using nuclear waste, because it just turns out to be such a great coolant for this particular type of loop. But after, after we get our reactors up and running, I'm just going to wait until this is filled before we do that. We should have just enough nuclear waste from all of our bees to fill up one loop, and that's all we really need to get started. We actually got this entire loop filled, and this second one has got a fair chunk in it. Now, if... I'm going to put up two saves this week, uh, this save at this exact point, and I'm going to have a second save after we've activated the reactors, depending on which one you want to play around with. But this one here, you don't need the nuclear waste to start. You can start just using water, but it won't be able to cool nine steam turbines fully. It's just there's not enough cooling power in water with aqua tuners. Nuclear waste, however, can keep nine steam, tur steam turbines cooled because it just has so much more of that uh, specific heat capacity going on. So let's start with just one reactor to begin with. We're going to stick one, you know what, let's make it out of something that's not uh, yeah, lead. Uh, I'm sure it will make a difference, but let's just put one right there. And if you'll check, you'll see we have water flowing in from this side. This water will flow in here and go into that section. And then we should hook this up to there. Um, hmm, you know what? 
I'll cover some more on this as this kicks off. But the plan here is this is the reactor here, this is the water coming in, and we don't have any automation to feed it uranium yet, but that will come later. Um, come on, come on, come on. Oh wow, I forgot how long these are going to take. Shabir, what's your skill? Construction skill 13? That's with 13 construction skill, how fast they're building it. Reactors take a little time. Oh, and while they're building that, the, someone should be along shortly to deconstruct those tiles. You can see they'll drop off their suit here, pick up another suit here, and then go in. Yep. And we've set it to vacancy only. So where is it? Vacancy only. So that means only three people can come in here at a time. If a fourth person tries to enter, they won't be allowed because there's no vacancy to drop off their suit. Now make sure that's set that way. Otherwise, what'll happen is they'll, uh, if you don't have it set that way, they'll come in and people will just keep coming in even though they're not supposed to be able to and they'll keep dropping off suits until eventually you have four or five suits just left on the ground. All right, nuclear reactor is ready. It's waiting for its enriched uranium. Nice. You can see here on the side that little dial filling up. That's how much water is in the reactor. You want to keep that full at pretty much all times. So what will happen here is once the enriched uranium goes in, this thing's going to start squirting out a lot of steam, but not quite steam. The way it seems to work is it drops water out. Uh, let's slow this down an awful lot so we can see. Yeah, once it's got this water in there and then once the uranium hits, Boom, 180 kilos of enriched uranium, which is enough to keep this going for 18 cycles. So make sure you've got this sucker good to go, otherwise you're going to have problems with it exploding. Now, the uranium here starts generating mutineer waste, but it also heats up the water. So you see the water there is going up in temperature to 70, to 80, 300. And then once it hits about 400 degrees, I believe, it spits it out. And by I mean it spits it out, it drops it at the bottom of it. Nah. Yeah, there you go. You can see that blob there can't actually get a bead on it. One second. Now, that's a blob of 400 degree water. And it drops down to the bottom. We also had a, a little pile of water left down here to help cool things down. It just, uh, if you don't, you end up with a little bit of burning on your aqua tuners to start. Not the biggest deal, but then that just keeps going on and on and on. The reactor is just going to keep dumping out little blobs of water. 30 kilos at a time. Heats it up to 400 degrees, spits it at the bottom, and three, two, there we go. Spits it at the bottom. One of the bad things about this, though, is the reactor has a pressure limit. I believe it's about 100 kilos. If the steam pressure around it is more than 100 kilos, it can't vent. So what we like to do is drop it out of here, the steam lands at the bottom, and then as it off-gasses, this area down here is going to be the most pressured, and as it goes up and up, there'll be less and less steam pressure. Assuming we keep the steam turbines running and everything's fine. Uh, we're here. Oh, temperature's actually quite low. It's just sort of evaporating all the water we left down here. Oh. And there is some nuclear waste as well. The nuclear waste that comes out of here is also incredibly hot. Um, the nuclear waste also drops out the bottom and stays down here. This is good for us. That means the nuclear waste stays down the bottom. The steam goes down the bottom. And you'll notice this reactor here is still actually, should still be in a perfect vacuum. Yeah, it's still in a perfect vacuum. This thing doesn't heat up on its own. There's a really great design I've seen where they actually kept this in a vacuum and dropped the water out to, well, you know what? It's on Reddit. I'll, I'll link it in the description. But this... This is the start of our nuclear reactor. Now, we're only having one going for the moment. The reason being, I haven't quite filled this loop with toxic waste or uh, yeah, nuclear waste. So what we want to do is run this for a bit, get some more nuclear waste, use that nuclear waste to fill this cooling loop, and then, then we'll have enough to, you know, run two reactors flat out. At the time being, we probably could set up the second one, though I just don't want to. It's a little bit risky. Just a, just a tad risky right now. Uh, let's give this five minutes while this steam room starts to fill up. Ah, steam turbines are starting to activate. Yeah, let's speed this along a bit. There we go. So, steam turbines are starting to activate, and what should happen is the bottom ones should activate first, then these ones on the second level, and then finally on the third level. And we've set these at... Ooh, we'll have to wait till the steam pressure hits, what, 10 kilos? You know what? I'll show you when it starts getting up to there how we've uh, configured the water reclamation. Now, the thing is, if we just keep dumping water into this reactor and it just keeps dumping it into this room, eventually this whole room is going to become overpressurized with steam. There'll just be too much steam in there. So at some point, what we have to do is take the steam that's coming in here, recycle it, and dump it back into the reactor, and stop adding in water from outside. Now, the simplest way I've found to do that is, this thing takes, well, the wiki says it takes six kilos. It does not. It's usually about five, I think, or maybe five and a half. I'm not exactly sure precisely how much it is, but what we do is as follows. We have this little atmo sensor here, and when it detects that the pressure in here is going to go above 5 kilos, actually that's, it should probably be more about 10 or maybe even 20, but we'll, we'll worry about that as we go along. Once it detects the pressures in here has got high enough, then it sends an automation signal to shut down this vent. So it'll shut off this liquid vent. That liquid vent will then mean the liquid will backflow up here and start dumping into the reactor. 
So once that happens, it means that we'll be recycling the water coming out of here and dumping it back in there. If this is full though, it'll just uh, end up keep waiting until this is free again and then dumping into the side. So we should be fine. All right, and we're also putting in an auto sweeper here and a conveyor chute drop off. I think we'll probably seal this off at some point and we'll dump all our enriched uranium right there and then it can get auto swept into the reactors. Not that it's really going to save us much time, to be honest. This thing takes 10 kilos of uranium per cycle, and how much is it still in there right now? Yeah, there's 160 kilos in there. Yeah, that thing's not even going to know. It's, it's 16 more cycles. All right. Let's uh, skip this forward a little bit until all the construction is done. Plenty of power coming out of this sucker so far, but it, we're nowhere close to redlining this. That's when the rec second reactor has to go in. But for the time being, we're just letting the liquid flow through here and getting everything up to speed and getting ourselves up ahead of pressure. Why haven't you changed yet? You're detecting five kilos, it's above. Why is it not sealing those? Disabled by automation grid. Oh wait, just the animation's not showing. You can see, yeah, look, it's recycling the steam pressure. So the water is coming in from up here and queuing up. And if there's any gaps in the flow, it's taken up by this because you do not want to leave any gaps in the flow when it comes to this stuff. Hmm, we might actually need a little bit of a bigger backlog. I'm thinking, yeah, if we say it did that, put it out to there, and then maybe, yeah, I just want to have a little bit of an extra backup just in case, what? Yeah, that's a lot better. A little bit more belt foo, that gives us a, a better backlog, the sort of, these pipe segments can act as a little bit of a tank, just in case there's a, a heavy draw of demand, and then it slacks off. We don't want to have too much water injected in there. Now, well, this thing's not up to speed yet, but knowing that, we should maybe do some changes over here too. There, we just replicated the same thing over the other side as well. Perfect, just a little bit of a backlog. Now, let's stick in our second reactor here. We've uh, managed to fill up this second loop. I I grabbed some more toxic waste from over there. We, we basically pumped it out of here all the way over into the tank and then scooped out just enough. Now, it's a little bit warm to start because it was about 140 degrees, but it's slowly... Oh, damn it. One second. Yeah, that, uh, unfortunately, that line has stalled out. We're going to need to remove one blob from that to get it moving again. This is a common thing. This this little overflow section we do, the one that allows it to bypass it if the, the aqua tuner's not on, you really need to make sure that, that uh, you didn't leave, overfill it. So, yeah, we've got a plumber, don't we? You know what? If we don't, it doesn't matter. We can just pop one of these and then mop up the mess. Well, that's that fixed. It's flowing. I just deleted one, t one blob of it and replaced the pipe. All good. Now we can stick in the second reactor and really kick this sucker into overdrive. Oh, and we can get rid of these extra tiles at the top. They were just put there uh, originally. I didn't know exactly how tall this is going to be. These things are six tiles tall. And they're five tiles wide, if I recall. Yep. So six by five. And the water and the toxic waste drops right out of the middle tile and straight down here onto the aqua tuners. Steam-wise, we're up to 180 degrees, but that's going to start declining. As we add in more steam... Hmm, you know what? Let's put this straight up. Whoa, how is there 10 kilos of pressure in there already? Hmm, let's get that second reactor up and running. We're going to change this to 15 kilos of pressure, and that should, like, the 15 kilos of steam pressure should make sure the steam gets all the way to the end. For example, what have we got down here? We're up to 15 kilos here, and it's not quite making it all the way to the end turbines. Oh, uh, in that case, you know what? We'll make it 18 kilos. Yeah, 18 kilos of steam pressure, and we'll see how it goes from there. If it explodes, this will be really inconvenient, I suppose. Uh, deconstruct that. And let's check our radiation. Mmm, that's a good, healthy glow you've got going on right there. This is going to be an excellent place to grow plants. Lots and lots of plants. Also, we should really make ourselves a main power grid to take advantage of this power we're producing. We're producing quite a bit. We'll go over the numbers in a bit. Let's just make sure our second power plant gets up and running first. And that's second reactor online. All we need to get is fueled. Water goes in. You can see the dial go up on the side. Once we get some uranium going in there, our radiation should improve. You can also see the radiation is absolutely incredibly powerful. If you could get rid of the walls. Now, we've insulated this in mafic rock because mafic is one of the ones that has the least resistance to radiation. In other words, more radiation passes through. Well, of all the insulating tiles we can get our hands on, insulation is even better. The, uh, ooh... Yeah, that's a good glow right there. Perfect. What are we looking at? We got 223 rads just outside the door, 226 on... Wait, how is it different? Okay. Uh, right, maybe one side is more radiated than the other? It's fine. Um, not going to care too much. What I want to do now... Oh, sorry. 
What was that? What is this? Sandy ore field? I think this is part of the patch. Or the, yeah, total mass remaining 66.2 tons. Sandstone, sand, algae, copper, and artifacts are available. Okay. Yeah, we're probably going to go out and raid that later, but I thought we were going to have to regenerate the map. Never mind, never mind. No, 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 no. Let's not, let, no, not getting distracted. Not getting distracted. We are going to finish this off. And yes, I know this isn't connected to any power consumers, so it's just generating power that's going nowhere. But that's fine. That's fine. Once we get a, a, our correct head of steam up and we get the steam pressure up to about 18 kilos, all of these should be running flat out. Oh, uh, I think I've made a bit of a mistake here. This is a newer design I'm trying out. Uh, I need to change how this is done. Uh, the problem is we need this to divert water up here, like to always send the water up here, unless this is full, in which case then it sends it at the side. So I think I'm going to start modifying this now before the steam pressure in here gets too high. Yeah, so I think it's modification time on this section. One moment. All right, the plan here should be quite simple. One second. This liquid bridge here and should basically mean that all the water coming through here should get shunted up here into the nuclear reactor. Any excess water that can't go into the reactor will instead get dumped out the liquid vent. Now we're going to do something similar over here the other side. But, um, you know what, I'll just do this first and then I'll explain why we're doing it. There we go. Right now, all the output of the top three steam turbines is shunted directly into the nuclear reactor. Now, if the nuclear reactor has no space for that water, the rest of it gets shunted right back into the steam room. So if we've done this right and we've got the pressure in here high enough and these things they're shunting out, say they should be... Where is it? Give me, give me a reading here. I need to get a reading on this. Uh, no, that's 4.6 kilos. These things are not working at full capacity, these steam turbines. You'll see they're working at lower capacity. That's because they don't have enough steam coming into them. That means there's not enough steam in this room just yet to support this. So what I'm going to do for now, until all three of those are at full capacity, is we're going to sever these. We can put them back together again if we want to. That's uh, the that's the pliers utility. You'd have to actually deconstruct them manually otherwise or set up switches. It's just with the pliers, pliers uh, mod, it's just so much handier. Okay, then we let this run until all three of these steam tire barons up top are working at full capacity, as in they're sucking in full two kilos of steam. And all three of these are utilizing six kilos of water per second, just like these ones down here. If we check these ones down here, you can see content six kilos of water is coming through that pipe over here, six kilos of water. Same with all of these. All of these ones are now up to full speed, if I could just get a bead. Whereas these ones over here are 4.8, and this one over here is up to 5. But once both of these are pumping out 6 kilos of water per second, we'll reconnect that. At which point, no more fresh water should ever need to be injected into this room. Because if you keep injecting water into this room, eventually it will overpressurize and your nuclear reactors will pop. And that is bad. Alright, I think we're good. Over here you can see this is putting out a continuous 2 kilos of uh, water per second. That's another 4, and then we're up to 6. So we've actually got enough steam pressure to keep this going. This one's wonky a bit, but I think it's because I put this liquid lock here. It's caused a little bit of a mess up, but but that's fine. For a first time attempt at a reactor, I think we're doing pretty good. Now we'll stick on the overflows. This means 6 kilos of water should be pouring directly in here, which means no more fresh water should be added to the, the reactor. Alright, now just to go over why this works and why I put the reactors at the top. I originally started putting the reactors at the bottom of and putting the steam turbines above it because I thought that was the same approach and it would be your default reaction. But because the liquid and the toxic waste drop out of it, you're sort of swimming in the waste and you have to move the waste out of the way and this waste actually has quite a lot of heat in it and a lot of heat capacity. So this way we get to drop the waste at the bottom that gets, you know, we get a chance to absorb all the heat out of it with the temperature shift plates we stuck it behind it. At the same time, we're able to stick down our aqua tuners down here, and all of our heat, like all the heat generated by the reactors, literally sits down here because it gets dropped out of the reactors. So all the heat generated by our aqua tuners also gets dropped down here. And with nine steam turbines, and guys, what are you doing over there? Oh, you know what? Let's uh, let's cancel that. They seem to be freaking out. Just, just stop. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, and with all the heat down here, that means all the cooling also drops down here. You'll notice all of the actual liquid vents, they all drop down on this section. So all the cooling from all the steam turbines is applied to this one location, and all the heat is generated in this one location, giving you a nice way of getting all the heat in here into these steam turbines, then these, and then finally up here. And this is the beautiful bit. This is expandable. If you don't like two reactors, if you'd like four, not a problem. All you do is you stack two more reactors on top of this, and all of the nuclear waste and all of that steam will also drop down from the two above that, 
all the way down to the bottom. And you just have to put in four aqua tuners because you're going to need to cool another nine steam turbines. And you just make this deeper. And the reason this is so expandable is because the steam pressure at the bottom will eventually go above 100 kilos, which would overpressurize these research reactors if they were down there. But instead it has to float all the way up, and so long as it never shuts off, the pressure up here will never get too high because it'll keep going out through the steam turbines, and by the time you get to the top you're at what? 27, 28 kilos? Well, theoretically. I haven't gone with the four rea reactor variant. I did a bit of study into the four reactor variant, but it was already taking me too long to build the two reactor variant, so I figured I'd just stick with this one. And this beauty here, once it gets up to speed, it's not quite up to snuff yet. It needs to get to about 203 degrees is where it'll about max out at. And that will mean all 18 of these steam turbines will be running flat out. All 18 of them. That's a ridiculous amount of power. And bear in mind, we're burning through about 20 kilos of refined uranium per cycle. So at 20 kilos of refined uranium per cycle, how much we got left? 9,478 kilos of enhanced... of a... Uh, enriched uranium. So that's about ooh, 947 divided by 2, so say just say 450 cycles. We have about 450 cycles of, of uh, enriched uranium going around to keep this running for. We're not even at 450 cycles and we've already refined enough to go another 100 and 450. I think we'll be fine, especially considering our uh, B refinement over here is, yeah, it's going quite well. <laughs> Dear Lord. We have all the bees we could ever possibly want. Oh, uh, because I put in this uh, walkway here, I put in a, a temperature shift plate right there. Its job is to inject heat into that oil. I need that oil above uh, 100 degrees, otherwise when this steam comes in contact with it, it will sometimes turn back into liquid. But now that that's gone above temp, we can deconstruct the temperature shift plate. Done. And if we check here, yep, that's spitting out two kilos of water per second. Now you notice it's not at full capacity because some of that steam is getting cooled down in the corner, so it's uh, under capacity for heat. But everything else, yeah, we're looking good, and the temperature's slowly rising up to 197. Mmm. Let's just skip this forward a couple cycles until she evens out. And we're good. We've got temperature coming out of here at about, ooh, where is it, 200, 203, 304 degrees. So you can see it's just along here, it's about 203, is what it's coming out to. Over here it's about 202, 204, 204. Over here we're looking at, ooh, 201. It's slowly creeping up up here, 201. This one is the only steam turbine that's not maxed out at 850. All the rest are at 850. 850 every single last one of them. 850 watts. The only reason this is not there is uh, some of that heat has been leached out by this oil in the corner, but that oil will eventually stabilize about 200 degrees as well, so we don't care. That's also why this is double liquid locked. Just to make sure none of that temperature escapes. You notice, yep, nah, it's salt water over there, doesn't care. Still a balmy 23, this stuff, 152. Thank Jeebus for double liquid locks, okay? Now, this whole thing, I should probably point out, uh, yeah, I messed up at the start here on this, so if you're doing this yourself, maybe uh, sever these lines and just have the water dumping straight back in until you hit pressure. Pressure for this is about, well, 30 kilos. Once it hits 30 kilos of pressure up here, yeah, you know, you're good. At the same time, once it's connected up, we'll never need any more water injected in here. I've left these here for now, but uh, that's just me, I'm paranoid. At the same time, temperature-wise, you'll notice, still pretty balmy outside this. Those, that mafic rock was keeping the temperature in quite nicely. And at the same time, it's radiated as all hell. I even took off the corner blocks just to see if we could uh, let out some more radiation. We're going to plant plants up here, and they're going to get very, very radiated. I'm thinking maybe sleet wheat on top. Yeah, maybe sleet wheat on top. Some uh, bristle blossoms on the side. We're going to need some pinch of pepper nuts. If I'd have been thinking I would have made this one tile higher, I would have raised the nuclear reactors one more tile. That way I could fit in some more plants in here. That was my bad. I, I thought two tiles high would be enough, but I'd have to actually place the the planter pot there and that's not really possible the reason being this toxic waste or the nuclear waste despite being really good at cooling it its freezing point is 26.9 uh, and aqua tuners reduce liquids going through it by 14 degrees which means that's 30 that's yeah that'll be 40 something degrees so i set this to just 50 50 degrees it doesn't go any below 50 that way uh, the maximum temperature it reduces it to is 36 degrees which means it doesn't actually freeze in the pipes. You don't want any pipe freezing. So it's a little bit warmer in these areas right about there. You'll notice, yeah, it's about 55 degrees in place. Yeah, it, it's toasty, right? It's toasty in there. That is just one of the side effects of using it. But the joy of this is one aqua tuner can cool nine steam turbines. If you try to use water, you can only, you can't cool them all. I, this original, this design, when I originally made it, you'd have to have four or three to four aqua tuners to cool everything. By just switching to straight nuclear waste, it made things so much simpler. It gives you this nice, simple design. 
and the power from this 15 kilowatts 15.3 kilowatts you get out of this sucker that's that's actually pretty good i mean a petroleum boiler only gives you 10 kilowatts so getting 15 kilowatts out of this damn thing is just stupid as well as that you can expand it if you want go with four go with six go with eight nuclear reactors assuming you've got enough bees to support it all you should be fine i'm quite happy with how nuclear turned out now you will say you can get access to some of the uh, the other ones like the petroleum boilers and geothermal power. You can get access to them way sooner than you can get access to this. However, they require an awful lot more knowledge of the game. You're going to need uh, counterflow heat exchangers, or you're going to need to know how to put in a heat spike and dealing with magma, which is very dangerous. This stuff is just gets to late game. You chuck down a reactor, you fill it full of uranium and water, and as so long as you've strapped enough steam turbines to it, you just get lots of power. A little bit of risk, but I think this is a good intro to late game mega projects building these things because they are quite doable for anyone and you don't need an enormous amount of not like you don't need some of the stupid amounts of knowledge you need to get some of the more difficult builds done anyway i am way over budget again on these things but it's just yeah that was a lot of fun to build uh food wise oh yep rotten barbecue i'm gonna have to put in some like the next thing up we're going to have to do a whole bunch of flash freezing for our food because our food keeps going off all the time uh, as well as that we're going to need to provide cooling for our oxygen supply because we've kind of melted the ice biome i mean there's some of it left, but it's melted quite a substantial amount. I've also saved us up a bunch of sleep wheat grains so that we can start mutating seeds. So mutating, mutated plants are also on the menu. And there was a bunch of other things I wanted to do as well. Oh, and we have one new hire, Furious George over here. They're currently running like crazy to try and improve their skills. What did they start with? They were, yeah, research, suit wearing and rocketry. And because they had all three of those, it's actually very handy to skill them up. Research and suit wearing just means they're, well, yeah, definitely you want those. All right, I am going to cut that out here for the day. I uh, I know I'm mad behind on the videos. I had a little bit of overtime and a few things in work, but I think I put in a little bit of overtime on YouTube as well to try and catch back up again. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.